In previous sessions, we completed our landing page and we built out all the different blocks that build out all of our content. For instance, we have our hero section, our heading, and so on. Now, today we're going to take a look how we could add pages dynamically. For instance, if you go to an about page, and at the moment we just have this person card, but if you take a look at the home page, this person card also exists here. And that's because it's coming from our blocks. So for instance, if you take a look at our Strapi admin, and this is just a completed project because I kind of want to show you what we're going to do. If we look at our content manager, in our previous tutorial, we created our landing page, which consists of different type of blocks. And for a landing page, we use a single type. But your website may have multiple pages, and sometimes you're not sure what page you're going to have. So instead of using single types like we did for a landing page, and I did want to show you that example, we could actually create our pages as a collection type rather than a single type. And this is great because this way, our content editor could create any page that we want. For instance, we have this about page. And if we take a look at it, it consists of the same block elements that we are reusing in our landing page. For instance, we could add more blocks and we have all these different sections that we could add. But instead of the landing page, which is static, we could now easily create more pages for our website. That could be any other page that a content editor could add. For instance, I could create a new page and I could call it our company and this will be page about our company and we could use all the different components that we have and for now I'll just add a heading section and I'm going to say our company this is our heading. And when I click publish and save, what I'm able to do in my global, I'm able to add a link to our company page. And I'm going to say our company. And let's hit publish. And now if I navigate to our company page, notice that we see our heading. So this will allow your non-technical editor to easily create different pages dynamically in your application. And they could be any page that they want. And what's cool, it will allow us to use any of our different blocks that we created before to add any type of content. So the difference between a single type and a collection type is basically a single type. It's one type off. And you could say, we're going to have a landing page like we did here. You could create an about page. But that makes it not very dynamic. And so I want to show you how to create a dynamic page where you could have any type of page that you want. When the content editor is working on it, they will be able to add content via the blocks that you defined. And as always, we mentioned, you could add any additional blocks to represent the content in any way that you want. So your content editor could pick and choose for appropriate blocks to create their content. And what's awesome, if we're taking on our Astro website, we will be able to query a page based on the slug. That's why when I go on about, we use the about slug and it will fetch the about page. If you go to our company, it uses and matches the, our company slug and be able to get our company data. So now let's go ahead and create this dynamic page so we could use it on our application. And we'll test all of this via Postman because we haven't created this front end yet, but I wanted to show you this as an example. So now I'm back in my working Strapi project that we're all building together. If we take a look at our content type builder, currently we have our global page, our landing page, and the blocks that we created. So now let's create a new collection type and we're going to call it page. Let's click continue. And here we're going to add a text, which is going to be short text. We're going to call it title. Let's add another field that's going to be text again. We're going to go with long text. It's going to be description. And now let's add another field. And for this field, we're going to use our UI ID, which we're going to call slug, and it's going to be based off our title. So that's going to be the slug for the different pages that we create, like for instance, about page, contact page, so on. And finally, let's add another field, which is going to be our dynamic zone. 
We're going to call it blocks. This is the pattern that we used before. And now let's add components to our dynamic zone. We're going to use existing components because we already created all of our different blocks that are found here. I'm going to select all of them because these are the building blocks for our pages. And now we're going to click finish. So here is what our page would look like. It's going to have a title, description, a slug, and our blocks that will allow our content editor to set up the page. Let's click Save. Now that we have this, let's navigate to our Content Manager. And now we have our page collection type. We're going to click on it, and we're going to create a new entry. This is going to be our About page. And I'm going to say this is our About page. You could put whatever you like. And our slug is going to be about page, or we could just keep it about. So now let's go ahead and add a block. And we're just going to start with a hero section. And I'm going to say this is about page. This is going to have all of our content for about page. Again, very generic stuff. So we could see that it works. And we're just going to add an image. And I'm going to add a previous image that I have before, which is going to be this forest. Click Finish. And now that we have a hero section, we're going to go ahead and publish. Now that we have our About page, we need to give permissions for Strapi to serve this endpoint. So if you go to Settings, go to Users Permission, Roles, Public, and now we're going to go to our page endpoint. And we're going to go ahead and give our find permission. And here is going to be the endpoint where we're able to get our data. I'm going to go ahead and save. And now in our Postman, I'm going to go ahead and look up our pages. When I click Send, notice we get our response, which is an array of all our items. Notice that we're returning our top level elements, and we don't see our blocks. That's because we need to tell Strapi to populate those items. Something that we did previously for our landing page is we created a custom middleware that had all the logic to populate our page. We are actually going to do the same thing for the page endpoint. So go ahead in our landing page populate. Let's go ahead and select everything and copy because the code is going to be exactly the same. And now, in our VS Code, let's navigate to our API. We have a new folder called Page. And previously, when we were creating a middleware for our landing page, we used the CLI. But you could actually do this manually. And that's what we're going to do here. And inside the Page folder, we're going to create a new folder called Middlewares. And inside here, we're going to create a new file called page populate.ts. And we're going to paste our middleware code that we copied before. Um, the only difference is we're going to call this page populate middleware. And just quick review, everything looks great. And we're just going to remove this console log, say in page populate middleware, but the logic is all the same. We predefining our populate logic to populate all of our blocks. And we have access to the CTX, which will allow us to update our query based on populate logic. So here, everything looks great. The only last thing we need to do, if we take a look at our landing page example that we created previously, if you navigate to routes and you see the landing page routes, Notice that we are enabling the configuration for the find endpoint to use this middleware. So we're going to do something similar in our page. So inside the page folder, navigate to routes, open the page route, and here we're going to configure this to add our middleware. And so now we're going to say config, and we're going to use the find method. And we're going to say middlewares, which takes an array. If you don't remember the name of the middleware that we just created in the terminal, you could run yarn strappy middlewares list. And it's going to list out all the different middlewares. And here we could see 
that we have this API page dot page populate. This is the name of the middleware that we just created in this middlewares folder. So I'm going to go ahead and reference it here. Now that this is done, we could go ahead and restart a project. After our project is restarted, so now back in our Postman, we're going to request our pages again. Click Send. And notice that we're getting all of our pages that we have here. But we don't want to get all of the pages. We want to query the page based on the slug. And the slug is about. And we did this in the past where we used this populate query builder to build our queries. So we're going to do that as well here. So our API is API slash pages. And all we need to do is just pass the filters. And for the filter, we're going to filter on slug. And it's going to be about. And so we could go ahead, copy this query string. And in the future, we'll take a look how to do this in the front end. Uh, but for now, we're just going to test everything via Postman. So now I'm going to go ahead and paste that query string here. Make sure it's pages filter based on the slug and we're looking for about. When I click send, notice that we're just getting the data for the about page. So if I decide to create another page, so my Stripe application, let's go to content manager page. Let's create a new page and I'm going to call this test. This is a test. The slug is going to be test and we're just going to add a section heading component. I'm going to say this is test page, test page. And now let's publish. So now when we go back to Postman, and now if we want to find a test page, I will just query where the slug equals test when I click send. Notice that we're getting the test page with the block, which has the section heading. If I want to query the about page, I just say about. And now we could see that we're querying our about page data. And what's awesome, now you have a way for your content editors to dynamically build any page that you want. And the way you would request that page data from your API is just pass the slug for the page that you're looking for. So quick recap. Previously, we learned how to build pages via using single types, which is great if you're not going to have that many pages, or maybe you want to have a specific page, like for our case is the landing page but you could also use collection types to build dynamic pages. What's awesome is you could have as many pages as you need for your website, which are generated dynamically. And this is based on our pattern that we use. If you take a look at the content type builder, look at the page. Basically, the magic here is that we have the slug that we're able to use to look up the page. And we also have our various blocks that our content editor could use to build out the page. If you have any questions, you could always ask them in the comment. And as we finish our backend strappy project here, and when we start building our front end, you'll see how this will all come together. But based on what we did, you could see that we are able to easily get our data from our API just by passing the slug for the page that we want to get, which is pretty awesome. With this being said, we have took a look at how to build our landing page. We now know how to build additional dynamic pages that we could fetch based on the slug. And finally, for our backend, we just have to finish the block section. So in the next video, we're going to take a look how to create our block collection type, which will allow us to get all of our block data to either display it on a page of all the different blog posts that we have, or if someone navigates to the single item, they'll be able to see all the items in the blog post. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next section.